What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to HGS Pro's like your weekly Halo Esports podcast. There's Brian. Squawk, squawk, motherfucker. Sure. Indeed. In chat, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this episode 190, we're getting close to 200, man. We are, Whew. we are getting fucking close. For the week of July 4th, 2021. Um, today, we so we record on Mondays, obviously now. Um, so just, Jesus Christ. Yo, tools. Yo, is that the, the, uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh tools right there? With the follow, I believe. Thank you. I appreciate that. Welcome. Um, yo, Mark owns your face. Holy moly. That's a name we haven't seen in a while. It's been a while. Since I've been <laughs> seeing Mark in the chat. And it's been a while. Yo, Tools, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools, and Marmar, welcome. God, I was fucking live show's popping today, motherfuckers. <laughs> glad to get here live for once. We're glad to have you, man. Always got to watch on the tube. Yeah. The fucking red tube, if you know what I mean. So, if so, we record on Mondays, right? Yeah, yeah, that's this is today is technically the fourth of July observed. Yep. So because the fourth of July took place on Sunday, which was yesterday. So if you did partake in festivities, we hope you enjoyed safely. Um and yeah. Hope everyone still has their fingers. Yes, absolutely. And their stomachs. Yeah. Depending on the amount of alcohol you may or may you not know. have consumed. Yeah. Um, but no, welcome. We're here to talk about some Halo, among other things. Um, Mark says, Hey, I'm always listening guys. Even if I can't make the live show. Hey, it's just, we haven't seen you in a while. We still love you. And for the record, he doesn't own my face. He owns your face. Bringing that back. See, I didn't forget. We keep, we keep this shit rolling. My name is Josh, AKA JK fire. Speaking of things rolling, we have the intro and I'm joined this week by the man in the team's jersey that we hope is actually going to be decent in this next stage of the CDL, the Minnesota Rocker, Will, a.k.a. I am Mr. Mayhem. Will, how are you doing on this 4th of July observed Monday evening? Doing good. Um, You know, I had Friday off as well, so this is a four-day weekend for me. Holy moly. So I, like, I don't know, kind of wish I had more of these. Is, are you excited <laughs> to go back to work tomorrow? Is anybody? No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah, so I'm doing good, you know, adulting today. Getting yeah. uh bought a vacuum, you know, organizers for the room. Man, you're just gonna suck yeah. in more ways than one now. <sighs> yeah. But um great. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, I'm Minnesota Rocker, I'm wearing their jersey. Uh they have the Minnesota sports team curse as well, where they look good on paper. They do the right things most of the time. Yes. And they always fall short of the goal. So Yes. And as Tool says, being a Rocker fan is like being teased and edged for life. Standy Goat, though. Yeah. Standy is sure. doing really well. He is. Yes. Um, you know, he was a bench player or was he a, a amateur player? I think he was a challengers Challengers, player, yeah. That's I think. Brought him up and he's been showing he can do some things. Uh, he was great in the first series that he joined because no one knew what the hell he was going to do. Mm -hmm. And now we're kind of like, eh, he's, he's got... He's got some things to work on, but always getting better, which is the goal. I saw a CDL um, graphic that they put up on Twitter that compared the statistics of all the rookies mm -hmm. that are in there right now, and he is one of the best. Yeah. So he is constantly improving, obviously. Um, and I'm excited to see what him and the boys do moving forward in the CDL. Agree. Uh, I think the next stage is set to start soon here. I think it's the NYSL home series technically speaking. So yeah. we'll see what goes on there. We're edging closer and closer to the uh, like grand final major. So it'll be a good time. Excited. And it'll probably be LAN as well because LANs are back. Yes. So good stuff. Uh, Tool says, I think V1 will pick up a Halo team. I would love if version one picked up a Halo team. For those who don't know, uh, version one, the Minnesota Rocker, they're all the same. Basically, yeah. they're owned yep. by Wilf. Uh, so... Yeah, it's all kind of the same thing. The reason why I love V1 to have a Halo team is because we already have merch. Do you have you have a t-shirt, don't you? No. Oh, never mind. I have yet to get one. When you do, 
you will <laughs> eventually. But yeah, it'd just be nice because I can just wear that same shit for Valorant as I do for Halo. You just uh, with with Halo the way it is right now though, like we could root for V one, but are they going to be even a top six contender? I'll always root for the home, the quote unquote home team, right? Yeah. So it'll just be a nice surprise if they do win. It, yeah, absolutely. Um. He has the cat ears, though. Don't look in his closet. I don't. And I actually, I thought that was really stupid how they had that for the Valorant The Valorant team. stuff, yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. Although, I did find I mean, it really funny that Fnatic, like, after they beat them, they, like, cut the ears off. Like, they oh, did yeah, the yeah. emote to, like, cut the ears off. I'm like, oh, you little cheeky fuckers. Look at you. But, you know, you gotta, you gotta uh, appreciate the org getting behind the players. Though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sure. No, and th- that's the thing that, that I really enjoyed about the, the first Valorant major event that took place uh, in Reykjavik was that the players genuinely were like, they were having fun. Like they, yeah. they seemed like they were having a good time, not even in the game, but like outside of the game as well. And just enjoying the time together, like playing into each other. It was just, it was great to see that uh, the emotion behind everybody. I like that. So talking on Valorant. Yeah. Did you see the Twitch rivals tournament that took place with Valorant? I did not. So there's a lot of um I'm I'm curious I've been watching cha- challengers right now but not okay. the Twitch rivals but I'm curious on on people's thoughts on this cuz there's have been some videos some some streamers complaining that so Twitch rivals they put on a Valorant tournament with money on the line right and okay they made captains of teams right so the gave- Twitch so just before you continue Correct me if I'm wrong here, but if this is take if this is like all the other Twitch rivals events, they have like you said captains, and these are like prominent streamers in the space. Yep, and like, then uh, uh, yeah, just uh, Beanans, Pokimane was one. Um, was Shroud in there? No, Shroud did not play. Surprising. Um, then again, but, him yeah. and Beanans are together, but that's right. besides the point. Yeah. So um, okay, go ahead. So there was a draft, right? The captains yes. got to draft their teams, and there was limits, right? Right, like one immortal, um, or maybe t- two immortals tops. Um, one, what's the top? Because it's uh, is it radiant? Radiant, yeah. So like one radiant, two immortals, and then a diamond, right? Is okay. what you could draft. Okay. Now, um, we talked about how big of a skill disparity it is between like, yeah, diamond yeah, sure. and immortal. Yeah. Well. Sometimes those diamonds just need, like, I would say diamond is a like, little more oomph. Yeah, like you, you put them with an immortal and they can do some work. Okay. Right? Like, um, okay, so they have the draft. They have the draft mm-hmm. and the teams got sorted out. Yes. Now, the big problem was, is like a lot of these streamers were like, I'm drafting my friends because I want to have fun. Makes sense. So a lot of contention came out when B Nan's draft drafted Mendo and Timmy together. Because uh, Mendo's uh, radiant, Timmy is immortal. And also this guy, Cookie Monster, I've never heard of him. And one other person I can't remember. So is Pokemon, I'm, I'm not trying Sorry. to be an asshole. Is Pokemon the diamond? Um, Beanans was the diamond. Oh, oh I'm sorry, is not- Beanans. is Beanans team. Yep. So Beanans was the diamond. Yep. Okay. Then you have an immortal, you have a radiant, you need one more immortal, right? No, uh, or another diamond. Okay, so Cookie Monster was one no, of those two. Uh, I'm pretty sure Cookie was also an immortal. Okay, but you said that that, but that, that's but that okay. was that was followed within the rules, right? Okay. The team was made within the rules. Okay, and they I have no problem so, with this. So yeah, yeah. So they destroyed the competition. They they Good just ran them. the table because while Mendo is radiant, Timmy was immortal. Timmy is good enough to be a radiant. Okay, but drafted within the rules. So exactly. the, the, the contention came in a lot of streamers who are like Twitch, Twitch does this like as a, like, let's have fun tournament. Let's get all these streamers together. Yeah. Um, and that's how other teams drafted. I'm going to draft my friends to have fun. Yes. And they're like, it's not fun when you're getting destroyed by a stacked team. Sure. So a lot of streamers were like pissed that Beanans was able to draft that stack team. Here's my question before we even continue. Yeah. I take it that Beanans was not able to pick all of her players at the same time. Right. No, it, well, maybe, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that exact fact. I'll say this. If it was like a snake draft where you, you go one person at a time and they pick somebody, you can't be pissed. 
Right. Like right. sucks to suck. You should have picked them yourself, you idiot. No, I think this was like a like bring bring your team type of thing. I don't know. Okay, if it was, if it was that, I guess then I, don't I know. understand no, some they, they of the contention. It, they said it was a draft. We either okay, either way, like you can't be mad at them. Hold on, Maddie says, screw that. It's a competition with usually a lot of money up for grabs. Yeah, so we're talking about like the, so, the so, for fun versus Yeah, so this is okay. the this is the point I was trying to get to. Go ahead. Um a lot of the big streamers who wanted to have fun. Um, I just Pokimane made a whole video on it. So this is why she's popping in my head. But there was other streamers as well who was like, This is supposed to be for fun. You know, why are we having these such stack teams? Like it's not fair, all this. And then Mendo came back because while he's good at Valorant, he's not a big, he's not, he's not a millionaire, right? He's not a millionaire streamer. So he's like, (laughs) Brian, (laughs) he's like, he basically said, look, there's 50 grand on the line. I don't have a lot of money. I'm competing to win the money. Even if it's supposed to be a for fun tournament, they, they put on a tournament with money on the line. What do you expect? So like Maddie was talking about. Exactly. Okay. So does Twitch rivals just need to rebrand? Like, I'm curious, like what's, what's the answer there? Like, or the, does the money need to be for charity? Like that's wh- that's it, right there. That I'm. That's the point I wanted you to make. Okay. If this is supposed to be a for fun event, yeah, the money's for charity. That's the way it should be. Don't put money on the line for other people to earn. If it's supposed to be a for fun event, the money should be for charity of the winning team. The winning team picks a charity that they want the money to go to. That's where it goes to. No other money gets put into their hands. Right, because then you don't. You honestly don't get these. You take away the the quote unquote competition of it all. Right. It's Th- for fun at that point. You're right. fighting yep. for charity. Yeah. So that was a big thing that popped up in the Twitch slash Valorant space this week, and I was just okay. I don't know. You know. Yeah. It's, no, it's like that's. It's, I understand. I'm just it's, curious on other people's thoughts because I, I I honestly thought like. They drafted within the rules. You can't blame them for it. I think this is more a Twitch issue versus a, like, Beanan's drafting that team issue. Twitch needs to brand that tournament properly. Yes. Maddie says, I agree with that. That's how I would do it. Uh, and then, Brian, the reason why I laughed is because he said, I run better draft tournaments uh, confirmed. You're not <laughs> wrong, Brian. You're not wrong. Uh, Tool says, they can have an actual draft and do it HTS grassroots style, though. A pool of pro players, AMs, Twitch streamers. That's, like, that, yeah. that's not a bad idea either. What I want to know is... Whether or not this was an actual draft, like a snake draft or whatever, well, they, 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 or if this was a, oh yeah, pick whoever the fuck you want. Like that, that's what I want to know. Because if it was a, it, it, back to the contention point here, if this was an actual draft draft, then all the people complaining need to shut the fuck up because the money wasn't for charity. The money was like for the people competing. The people are going to compete to win. And if the if it's within the rules of the draft, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like I don't. It, uh, I'm looking up the information. Don't compete now. then. Don't compete then. But if this was, Tool says no way it was a draft draft. That's what I want to know. But if it wasn't that, then I understand the I understand the concerns. I completely get it. But at that point, that's when I would be. That's when I would say, if it's supposed to be for fun. It should be for charity. No way. It says, so on the schedule for this, the Valorant Series 2. Can you bring up the VOD by chance? For the. Can you try to find the VOD for the Twitch Rivals event so we can see if the draft was. So the drafting of teams was scheduled for the 26th of June and was not supposed to be broadcasted. So the teams for Twitch Rivals Series 2 have been finalized, but are yet to be revealed. So they did. They did an actual draft. So, well, but supposedly they did a draft, but it wasn't streamed. Yes. So we don't know. We don't know. Shit. Okay. So we can't, I, I don't want to speculate on that. I'm just, yeah. I, I'm going to have to take them at their word and say that it was an actual draft. I'm sorry, tools. I, part of me thinks that, I don't know. It seems really weird, but I feel like we well, have to take them at their word. We, I, yeah. And what they said afterwards is they did say a lot of the streamers said they picked their friends to play with. So, right. Yeah. I don't know. Just, uh, I don't blame, like, I don't blame Bean Ann's. Right, right. I don't. I don't. Yeah. If, if there's, if there was, it's not because there's real money on the line here. Yeah. And like, uh, Mendo said, right. Yeah. He wanted to win. Like, well, fuck it. You're, you're playing for money. Yeah. Go fucking win. It's a competition. 
But if it's supposed to be for fun, then Twitch, you're right. Like you said, Twitch should change their marketing of this and they should make it into a charitable tournament. Plain and simple. Like it gets rid of all of that. It does. Yeah, it does. And if people want to complain, well, it's like, well, I mean, it sucks that you didn't win. So you could donate that given money to charity. Why don't you just donate your own money then? Like, yeah, it gets rid of the, the bullshit. Yeah. Will, do you want to know what's coming up on this week's episode of the show? <laughs> yeah, sorry I derailed this right off the bat. What do you got? It's okay, because that's literally what this show is about. Yeah. Uh, so we had a little bit of forging, a little bit of fiesta, and a whole lot of tournament. We have the latest Designing the Halo Esports Ecosystem blog post that has arrived. And who the hell knows what else? And basically that was <laughs> Valorant, among other things. Yeah. So. Uh, stay tuned for other shit that we're going to talk about. Without further ado, let's get into some competitive news. The ladies HTS style Halo 5 draft 4v4. It's by Veronica. There's a little bit more information here. So the ladies HTS style Halo 5 draft 4v4. Sign up solo, get drafted onto a team. Saturday, July 24th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Signups end on Thursday, July 22nd at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the draft happens Friday, July 23rd. More details coming in the next week. And now the tournament is free to enter. So ladies, get the fuck in there for free. Do it up. Uh, tool says make you realize how heavy twitch money is at the top though oh yeah i mean you think about it, it's amazon so <laughs> infinite money basically them and google <laughs> so hts position is open this is by hit marker halo fans buckle up for this one 343 industries is hiring an esports producer for the halo franchise here's what you'll need experience producing live events esports and halo knowledge and top organizational skills are you interested you can check out the link in the google doc of the show notes of the show exclamation point show notes in chat where we include a link to the tweet along with the actual job posting so check it out tools applied to that congratulations and i hope and wish you well new hcs gear is coming oh boy i couldn't be more excited this is by tashi and he says yes all new hcs gear is on the way definitely going to be the best we've had by a long shot in terms of quality and design in other words my wallet is going to be so empty <laughs> it's going to be fucking insane i recently got some streamer merch that you know usually it's it's just like your standard tees and it's nothing like out of the world like quality wise mm -hmm. This line, so I'm going to say Dr. Lupo put out his Origins line. Yeah. And it's, it was based on, like, his gaming Origins. But anyway, the stuff is, like, of incredible quality. Is that live right now? It, uh, I believe it still is up. Um, I got the joggers, and they're, it's, it's just, I was surprised at how well made it all was. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, I like that a lot. <laughs> it's got like Josh the breath of the wild font for origins and that that's so that is dope that looks yeah, really good yeah. actually for those listening josh is just looking up the, the the merch line on his computer right now yeah here i'm gonna send it to you and then you put it in the twitch chat okay <laughs> do a sorry to sorry to i keep uh, i'm i'm all over the place go today. post that shit nah man it's good we t we're hey we're on the topic of merch fuck it yo Mia with the two month primer. Thank you so much. Welcome back. Woo! There you go. We're, oh, there it is. Pop Thank you so much for the two month resub, Mia. Greatly, greatly appreciated. Uh, Tool says, hopefully, 343 gives us something that doesn't feel like cringe to wear. Mia, what a goat. What a fucking goat indeed. And yes, Tools, I can't fucking wait. Uh, all I've wanted for the longest time is new HCS merch. Was the last like real stuff the uh, Halo 5 with like the yep. those shirts you got me with yep. the stronghold capture the flag all yep. that. Wow. The World Championship 2016 stuff. Yup. That's how old we that's how long we've waited. That is how and, long we've waited. It's insane. Okay, so with this I'll just say I hope with Infinite being a long-term model. Yeah. They got to they got to they got to keep update. it up. They got to yeah, keep like, that going. Like I love how the Xbox Gear store 
has been continuing on. Like they, they just released a summer line. We talked about in a previous episode and there's some halo stuff in there as well. Not HCS, but just regular halo stuff. And that's what I love is that they've done a pride line. They've done the summer wave. They've done in, uh, multiple infinite lines. Like the, all this stuff that's coming out, they're continually improving on it, iterating on it, bringing out more and more stuff. So yes, I hope that they do the same thing with the HCS gear. Um, but yes, it's coming. Uh, we don't know when. We don't know what, but we're fucking, I, I can't wait. I'm going to spend so much money. Natan, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> next up, and Brian will be happy about this. The DJ Blue PDX's Griffball Summer Series presented by DreamHack and powered by PlayGriffball.com. Halo 4 information. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The poll came back a success. Halo 4 has won the motherfucker. So, this is my Rage More Nerd, by the way, if you didn't already guess that. Signups are now open for the fourth and final event of DJ Blue PDX's Griffball Summer Series presented by DreamHack and powered by Play Griffball. Tournament starts on Saturday, July 24th at noon PST. This final event is a classic event that we played on Halo 4. Team and individual player signups are below. Uh, you, there's a team signups form. Use this form to sign up for your full team, four players max, and signups are open through Friday, July 16th. And then there's an individual player signup form as well. All these are included in the Google Doc of the show notes of the show. Exclamation point show notes in chat. Use this form to sign up by yourself and be added to a free agent pool. Incomplete teams and players looking for a team are encouraged to pull from players in this pool as these players have shown intent to play. Signups are open through Thursday, July 15th. After both signups have closed, any players remaining from the individual signup pool will be placed onto teams at random, so as many people are on teams as possible. There's a free agent pool Google Doc and a team list Google Doc as well. Again, Google Doc, the show of the show. Good luck, everybody. Good luck, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we did have a follow happen while Josh was reading and the... A couple. The sound seems to be broken for us. For the follows. For the follows, yeah. That just means you need to sub. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of this thing called Twitch Prime? I'm just fucking kidding. I feel like your Amazon account. <laughs> <laughs> it's you not, get a it's, free sub to any channel you want. It's no up. longer Twitch Prime. It's Prime it's Gaming. Prime Gaming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which Twitch is more than just gaming, but. This is where they're supposed to start rolling in, right? Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Amy, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the live show as well. Greatly appreciated. And then the, there's one more. Oh, fuck. And, oh, God. R-S-N-K-X? Yeah. Risknixk. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that's how it's said. <laughs> it's this roster radio all over again for oh, you. Oh, gosh, don't. Flashbacks. <laughs> how the fuck do you say that name? Do we put, I, I mean, we can't put it. it Hey, uh, RS, have you ever been on a competitive Halo team for any community tournament that's taken place so I can put you on the worst gamer tags of the year list? I think it's just RS, and then what's the second? I can't read it from here. Risk, up in the corner. It's NKX. Risk okay. Nick. I think it's just NKS, huh? Anyway. We appreciate it regardless. Appreciate it, yes. Thank you. For the, sorry for <laughs> shitting on your name. I apologize. It's kind of funny, though. Can you really blame us? You know, you're the one that picked it, not <laughs> us. So what are you going to do next up forge hub and Podtacular Fiesta frenzy contest announcement. This is by forge hub and Podtacular. introducing the forge hub and Podtacular Fiesta frenzy forge contest as a final send off to halo five. We have partnered with Podtacular to throw a fiesta before the highly coveted halo infinite drops this holiday season. This will be a two-part endeavor consisting of a forge contest and a tournament hosted by our friends over at Podtacular. We couldn't pass up on the great opportunity to host this combo with a grand total of $4,000 at stake. I think it'd be hard to not enter for at least one last hurrah in Halo 5. So what is it? This will be a map building contest for Halo 5 Forge in which you'll be designing maps for the Super Fiesta game variants found below. Maps will be judged in the on the top maps. We'll have a chance of being included in the Podtacular Fiesta Frenzy Tournament that will follow after judging has been completed, in addition to winning some nice cash and prizes as well. The game modes. Below are the game modes and any differences from that of traditional variants. In addition, you may be asking why are there no links to the game modes? 
Well, due to a very interesting bug with Waypoint in Halo 5, the game modes will not show up on Waypoint, so you have to download them manually from within Halo 5. All game types can be found in the file browser by searching for Godzilla T or Foge in the file browser under game types. You should be able to find them accordingly. There's Pod Fiesta Slayer, Pod Fiesta Oddball, Pod Fiesta Strongholds, Pod Fiesta 3 Flag, and Pod Fiesta 5 Flag. General rules. Potacular Super Fiesta game modes are meant for 4v4, so please build accordingly. Maps must be set up for all Potacular game modes. However, you'll be able to choose the map's two preferred game modes, which will be judging the maps on. If judging decisions become difficult in the end, those two game types will be explored further into your non-preferred ones, so plan accordingly. Maps must be made within Halo 5 Forge on either PC or Xbox. Three map submissions per contestant. More can be submitted. However, we'll only be including the first three, unless you specify otherwise. Maps cannot have been released or made prior to June 29th, 2021. So only new fresh made maps will be allowed. You will have seven weeks to finish and submit your map. When the submission period ends, the judging begins and will end when we review all of the maps. So when does it start and end? Start date, June 29th, 2021. So it's already started. The end date is August 17th, 2021. Judging period, roughly a month and a half. So who's judging? Judges include Dust Storm from Podtacular, Godzilla T from Podtacular, Sire, Sir, Sire, Sir Iron Wolf from Forge Hub, and Foge from Forge Hub. How much money do I win? There's some great prize stuff for grabs this time around, and just entering the contest means that your map may be considered for matchmaking. Prizes include, first, $1,000 in a Forge Hub t-shirt and socks from Forge Hub. T-shirt and lanyard from Podtacular. They got motherfucking socks. Forge Hub socks. Wow. Holy moly. Damn. Second place, taking home $700 and a t-shirt from Forge Hub and Podtacular. And third, $300 and a t-shirt and, well, a t-shirt from Forge Hub and Podtacular. Where do you submit the map? That's coming soon. So stay tuned for that. Celebrating Xbox in July. This is by uh, Brina Hatcher, the Fan Fest lead over at Xbox. There's a Fan Fest Halo 3 tournament. Grab a friend and enter the smash.gg ladder for non-stop 2v2 open matchmaking versus teams of all skill levels. Play for your chance to win part of $25,000 in prizes and show your skills off to the world in our broadcast of the weekly qualifiers in the series finale. Play on Xbox Series X, our fastest, most powerful console ever, Xbox Series S, featuring next-gen performance and our smallest console ever, Xbox One, the obsolete one, and PC. This tournament is open to all Xbox Fan Fest fans in North America, U.S., Canada, and Mexico. And to enter, log in or sign up at xbox.com slash fanfest and opt in on the Xbox Fan Fest exclusives page. Note, only North American residents will see this exclusive. After opting in, You'll receive an email with a registration code to complete the tournament sign on, uh, sign up on smash.gg forward slash Xbox Fan Fest. We invite everyone to watch. Weekly qualifiers will be broadcast on Sundays, the 11th, 18th, and 25th of July at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And do not miss out on the series finale on Saturday, July 31st at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Tune in and follow the channel at twitch.tv forward slash Xbox. Tournament format. Two days of open matchmaking ladders each Friday and Saturday for points. Weekly qualifiers every Sunday in a double elimination bracket with the top eight teams from Friday and Saturday each. A series finale on July 31st in a double elimination bracket featuring the top 16 teams for the month. Each day will feature a different set of maps and game types, which player must download to participate. And there will also be an in-game playlist launching on July 7th to allow players to practice. Schedule. Ladder matches Fridays and Saturdays, the 9th, 10th, 16th, 17th, 23rd, and 24th. Weekly qualifiers on Sundays, the 11th, 18th, and 25th, and the series finale on the 31st. Um, so, how to qualify? Ladder matches. Players compete to the top eight at the end of each day in terms of points. Weekly qualifiers, the top eight teams from each day, 16 teams total, advance to the Sunday's qualifier. Week one, top four teams at the end of the bracket advance to the series finale. Week two, top four teams advance. And week three, the top eight teams at the end of the bracket advance. Series finale, top 16 teams who advance from the weekly qualifiers compete in a double elimination bracket. And then they plan to host more events in the future, but that's besides the point. Now for the final news story that we got. 
the designing the Halo Esports ecosystem blog for June by the man himself, Tashi. Today, my friends, we're talking about teams. No, not a group of four players, but rather the team organizations that the players represent. So why are teams important? Well, teams play a super critical role in the success of esports, and that role is increasing all the time. First and foremost, they provide financial stability for the players in the scene. For long-term sustainability, players cannot rely solely on prize money. So it's important that there are ways for players to receive regular, reliable financial support to pursue competing. Creating content and streaming is also another great way for pro players to earn income. On top of that, teams also draw in fans to the scene, which is obviously critical to increase viewership for tournaments, content, and more. These fans also help draw in more fans to the team and game as they share the excitement on social media and in Twitch YouTube chats. With these two things in mind, you can see how deeply rooted teams are in the success of an esport, and that's why we're taking a very intentional approach for Halo Infinite Esports. So our approach. When HGS first started, teams would seemingly enter and exit the scene at random, and we had no direct relationship with them. The events were just big open tournaments with no advanced stage for pro teams until the finals, and that contributed to the issue. Over time, we started creating team skins in Halo 5, which is a great program and something we wanted to build off of for Halo Infinite, but in a far more holistic way. Our first step was to gather information and involve pro teams as early as we could. We proactively sought out information and feedback from those that participated in Halo and those that did not. We asked them about how they decided which games they wanted to join, which game ecosystems are working for them and why, why did they decide to enter and exit Halo in the past, and much more. We also learned about where they saw their business heading and how they could potentially see Halo fitting into it. This was a long but extremely valuable process. It helped us create and strengthen relationships with the teams, but also gave us vital information that went directly into the design of the Halo Infinite eSports ecosystem. On top of this, we are also big eSports fans ourselves and careful observers. We're seeing how the broader eSports industry was evolving, what other games are doing well, what pain points were existing in other ecosystems, etc. This also went into the design of the ecosystem and helped us iterate. As we're working through the design process, the franchising model and format in esports was starting to become popular. And we, of course, evaluated that option. For Halo, we decided it was critical that Halo Infinite Esports had an open format and ecosystem, and that we were building off of the philosophy that started way back with Halo Combat Evolved. We wanted to create an ecosystem that was as open as possible to allow for new teams to integrate into the scene at any time. For up-and-coming players to have the opportunity to rise to the top at any moment, and for tournament operators of all sizes to plug into the ecosystem across the region. At this point, we were ready to start drafting our plans for how teams would fit into the broader picture. Again, it was important that we took a collaborative approach. Once we had our V1 thoughts together, we reached out to trusted team partners to get early feedback on our plans. From there, we'd create a V2, then V3, and so on, until we felt we are ready to kick off the official process for teams joining Halo. So for the first time in Halo Esports, there will be an official partnership program for team organizations to apply for and take part in. Our goals are to offer a path to long-term sustainability for teams and thus players and staff, grow viewership, and grow overall fan engagement. At a high level, the teams in the partnership program are a foundational part of the ecosystem, and we want to deepen the relationship together with launch being just the beginning. Last year, we conducted an application process with numerous teams in North America and Europe, more regions to come online later. We looked at why they were interested in Halo, what their plans and approach would be, what level of investment are they looking to commit to, and more. I'm happy to say that after a lengthy application process, we have solidified a list of partner teams for the launch of Halo Infinite this holiday. At this point, you may be wondering exactly what it means for a team to be in a partnership program. Well, to start... Each partner team has designed their own in-game content, which will be sold in the game on day one of Halo Infinite's release, with more drops releasing over time. Shit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna have to save now to buy all this Infinite crap, man. That's, oh. th- that's the big one. That's the big piece right there for, from, from a player engagement yeah. perspective. Of course, teams will receive a significant portion of the revenue from each sale. Additionally, 
We're looking to enable teams to create as much content as possible to drive interest in the league. We'll be providing all access to broadcast VODs and footage captured at the event, as well as providing access for teams to film their own content, including backstage and onstage while their team is competing. Each partner team's roster and coach will also get their travel covered for every event they're eligible for, even if they start in the open bracket. My voice cracked. Partner teams will also have an opportunity to include their own sponsors, as long as they don't conflict with the HCS's sponsors directly into our broadcasts. And really, that's just the tip of the iceberg as we're already expanding on ways to ensure that teams have the opportunity and incentives to invest in Halo for many years. If you're an esports team reading this and are interested in learning more about the partnership program and how your team could get involved, then first I'd like to say thank you, and we'd love to connect and share more when the time is right. As mentioned, we're currently not bringing on any additional partners for launch. However, you can feel free to drop a line on Twitter. And I know we've talked about pro players and pro teams almost exclusively today, but rest assured, Halo Infinite Esports is an open format and ecosystem. These partner teams will need to earn every HCS point they get, and will have more ways for amateur players to rise in the ranks and compete against top pro teams on a regular basis, and live events will be open. The teams. Now, I know you're probably thinking, that all sounds great, Tashi, but who are the partner teams? Well, unfortunately, that's not news that we're able to share just yet. Also, it'd be pretty lame if we just listed out all the teams in a blog like this. Don't worry, we and the teams are cooking up some awesome plans to make the announcement. We intend to make a lot of noise when we're ready later this summer. In conclusion, enabling the success of our partners is critical to the success of Halo Infinite Esports. We stated it back in the first blog when we detailed our mission, and we hope this blog provided a more detailed look at what we've been working on. Beth, welcome. She says, yep, going to be spending that $60 I saved by not having to buy the game on the team packs. I think you tweeted that too, Beth, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, fucking excited. Swool says, uh, we're going to have team coats for armor off launch, which is hype as fuck from a consumer and from the production side, since there will not be a red versus blue anymore. Uh, I could see an exodus from COD AMs coming to Halo Infinite. Open ecosystem and opportunity to grow will be massive. Fuck yes. Also, Maddie says something. I'm going to read that in a second because... We have a little bit of a clarification here. This is by Maddie Rums and Tashi, as a matter of fact. Maddie asks, when you said teams can include their sponsors into a broadcast, do you mean like, for example, we'll see Jack in the Box, an Envy sponsor, advertisement? Tashi said, right now it's scoped to some logos and parts of the broadcast and not video ads. But basically, yes, you have the right idea. So there you go. Thank you, Maddie, for asking that question. Maddie also states, I like the idea of paying for travel and whatnot, but I feel like that could eventually gatekeep the amount of teams that get partnered. I think I like the idea uh, of if you qualify for top eight, you get your travel accommodations paid for better. I agree with that because after reading this, they even, Tashi even said that, now we don't know, overall, Maddie, I agree with you 100%. Based off the article, we don't know the amount of partnered teams for launch. And they did say that there will be no more at this time. Yeah. And you gotta, you gotta think that those partner teams have some pretty big stipulations. They have to meet to stay a partner team having X amount of salary. I would hope so. You know, things, things of that nature, sponsors bringing in other things as well. Yes. So also welcome back, Brooks. Good to see you. Yo, um, tool says, I mean, realistically, how many teams should really qualify for the partnership? 16. I think it's doable. Well, that's the question. We just, we just need to know. We need more information, right? So yeah, happy to get this blog. Happy to know that we're getting skins day one. That's going to be fucking awesome. Um, but yeah, excited to see who the partner teams are. We have no idea who they are, how many they are, what the application process is going to be like for those that want to join. So in the words of our show. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Thank you, Will. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize you were going to point to me. It's there. okay. It's okay. I put you on the spot. Uh, and that's it for the competitive news. <laughs> Time for your upcoming turns of the week presented by NoobCombo.com. Check out NoobCombo.com for all Halo Esports needs, but still no merch. Hey, Maddie. Where the fuck is the merch?
Um, Maddie says, depends on what the standards are for qualifying. Uh, do you do eight from NA, four from EU, and four from Australia and New Zealand? Or do you restrict it to performance or audience reach, et cetera? Um, yes, Brooks, we said merch. Tool says, what would I, what I would like to see is more opportunity for teams to be able to grow as an independent org. Talk showed that if you can win, you don't need an org taking a cut. If 343 covers the cost of competition, then I would try to make my own brand. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. As long as there's, like, like you said, Tool, it's like, as long as there's more opportunity for just players and organizations to, like, What's the what's the metaphor I'm looking for here? I don't even know. I had something in my mind and then it just I just lost it. Like not making your own legacy, but like stamping your own footprint in the overall Halo esports scene, I guess you could say. Because yeah, everybody loves a good underdog story. Everybody loves when the, the players themselves, not just win in the game, but win outside of the game as well. So I'm just looking forward to it. Um, their upcoming tournaments include on Friday, July 9th and Saturday, July 10th, the Xbox fan fest, Halo three, two V two ladder matches will be taking place on Saturday, July 10th. The SWAT nation SWAT back to the future three, Halo three, four V four is taking place. And then on <sighs> Sunday, July 11th, we have the Xbox fan fest, Halo three, two V two weekly qualifier. Ambition Productions, Halo 3, 4v4 tournament, and the Blue Team Tournament's Rainbow Road FFA, Halo 2 Anniversary Qualifier number one. And that's it for your upcoming service of the week. We said it by NoobCombo.com. Check out NoobCombo.com for Halo eSports needs. I might have to go back and clip that scream. Because, like, if you <laughs> extend it out a little bit, you're yeah. going to sound like a freaking TIE fighter. Like, what? Oh, that'd be amazing. Oh my God. I think I, there was a Dr. Lupo meme of that shit. Yes. Yeah. It's really I gotta, funny. I got to add you in there too. I like that. It's great. Brooks. I love your energy. Thanks man. Um, my watch just told me it's time to stand. Are you at? Therefore, Will, what do we got next? Roster media. You good? Yeah. I'm just standing. What's up? Uh. Am I still in frame? Nope. I'm not. I'm going to crouch. There. Is that good watch? Am I good now? Is All right, let's standing get for you? Roster Mania. We have Seduce's team. Where, where do these come from, by the way? I'm just like, is this like four infinite coming they up? They came from Twitter. Okay. Yeah, they just posted like, hey, hey we're a team. Yeah, this okay. is us. Hey, orgs. So we got some, us. Yeah, we got some new teams. It's Seduce's team. Barcode, Madzi, uh, Pradis, and Seduce. And they do say in the tweet, we're going to be looking to partner with an organization that we can establish a dynasty team and legacy with. Let's, uh, you know, that I love the confidence. Yeah. But let's keep expectations in check here. I love the confidence. Hey, hey infinite could flip everything hey, on its head. There's infinite possibilities, Will. Common Steam. Haynes, its name, Swish and Common. If any organizations are looking to be involved with it, with it. That's all it says. With it, they're it. <laughs> they're, they're they're it. Yep. Uh, it should be. It should have said us. You know. Nah, I mean, I no, no, they're it. You got to get with it, Will. It they says, need organizations to get with it too. It says, "Don't hesitate to email me, not me." <laughs> common, please email common at chriscommonbiz at gmail dot com or message not me. <laughs> <laughs> message common on Twitter. And then we have Ace's team. It's Ace, Boo Boo Doo Boo, Falcated and Bound. They have a coach already. It's Tusk. I mean, they're a pro team. And it says they're really a pro team. Never been more excited to get to work when the game drops. Will, what member is on that roster? Uh, bound? He's we get competing. to see Bound on land, bitch! Woo! We'll have to see how that goes. Oh, he's been, my God. I'm curious because he's been touted as an online performer. Yeah. We haven't seen much of him at land or, or uh, nothing. I'm fucking stoked. Yeah, I'm really excited. I hope No he... more robot face. Yeah. <laughs> Unless he wears like a Daft Punk style. What if he does? Like, oh, can he could could he compete with that on? That's like, a good question. Or or, or is it like it, does he have a helmet on and just remove the visor so you just see his eyes? 
So he can then see. He's got gamer goggles over the eyes. Ooh. Ooh. But where how would he wear his Astros? Ooh. Oh my God. They're embedded into the helmet. Oh my God. You see I the love little it. things poking up out of the helmet. I love it. He he constructs a helmet around and in, in encompassing and incorporating the Astros. So you yeah, just yeah. have the cord coming out of it, so yeah, you yeah. just plug it in. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh man, I like this. That'd be sick. I like this idea. That, that would definitely be like a persona to get behind. Yes. Like something to amp people up. Yes. Yeah, I love it. He'd be phenomenal. Uh Maddie says looking like Daft Punk on stage. Yes. Yes. That's yeah, the that's whole it. point. Comes out on stage with a dream mask. Nah, we don't talk about Minecraft streamers here. All right. <laughs> Actually, let me correct that. We don't talk about Minecraft cheaters here. That's right. Fuck you, dream! Minecraft speedrun cheating, bitch. Speaking of speedrunning, I have another story. Oh, the the summit. So summit beat the Max Payne three hardcore. Uh, Did he just beat it again? He lost it. Yeah. So he beat it a few days ago. Lost it three days later, and then yes, or within twelve hours of losing it, got it again. Fuck yeah! Like speed, let's go, sum sum. That speed running community is kind of crazy. Hey, speed, I have a story too. Speaking about speed running, did you know that Summer Games Done Quick is currently going on literally right now? Don't go watch it right now. You can watch us, but you know they're going on too. <laughs> but uh, I think a Super Mario Odyssey run is currently going on, which is fantastic. So again, don't leave. You can check out that vod later, but stay here, all right? Yeah. Or you know, there's these things called tabs. You can have yeah. two tabs open. Or yeah, if you have a two monitor setup, or you can watch. <laughs> Just fucking stay here. You can, yeah. All right. Thanks. Good. Um, that does it for roster mania. We usually have some tournament league recaps, but uh, there was no brackets posted anywhere this yeah. week. So I really want to say this real quick. Okay. There were supposedly four tournaments that took place over the last week because that's based off of the upcoming tournaments of the week from last week presented by noobcombo.com, which we talked about last episode. Well, I went to noobcombo.com. For all your Halo esports needs. And even Maddie didn't have any brackets or anything on that website. So I couldn't find anything either. And the the bracket for the Halo 2 charity tournament that took place was never filled out. Ooh. Yeah. Ouch. So, guys, I don't want to shit on a charity tournament, okay? But please, I've said it so many times. Update your brackets. Put your brackets in your tweets. Tweet out the results. Just put it out there. Come on. How hard is it to do? (laughs) Oh, my God. Josh getting tilted over brackets again. Oh, my God. And the other thing that pissed me off, too. So there, I think there was a, t- a tempered chaos tournament, I think was taking place as well, or was supposed to take place. Well, guess what? I couldn't find a bracket anywhere. I, I went to the person's Twitter account. I went to the person's Twitch account. You, you didn't post fucking anything. You didn't even post if it was canceled, dude. Come on. You may, it is so easy to not be lazy. Okay. Come on. Just fucking do it. It's unfucking believable. I've ranted for so long on this dumb fucking subject that shouldn't even be an issue. And every single time someone fucks it up. God. Well, let's get into some regular news. I'm pissed. You don't say. Yeah, I know, right? Halo Infinite Flighting PSA. This is by... Unishek. Oh, it feels so good to hear that somebody again. Fuck. <sighs> PSA. Halo Infinite Multiplayer Technical Preview Details will be made known ahead of time. It will not be a surprise. But you will need to be a registered Halo Insider. We're constantly evaluating the flighting build, just like we do with MCC flights. And the exact timing is dictated by development real realities. That said, once we do have a firm date locked in, we'll let you know. All right? And this is not from uni, but I want to say this. From me, Josh, a.k.a. J.K. Fire. Here's my PSA for infinite flighting. <laughs> What? What's so funny? Read the comments. All right. 
Uh, oh, Brooke says the cute superintendent noise between all the rage is ten out of ten comedy. Hey, I'm glad you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, Rage says definitely watch Mr. Monopoly's Halo Two any percent run on Thursday. Will blow your mind. Well, Rage, it's funny you say that because it's a bonus game if it meets a donation goal. So if you want to see Halo Two at Summer Games Done Quick, which I know you fucking do, because if you don't, you're a fucking loser. Donate if you're able to. And if you're not able to donate, that's fine too. Tweet the stream out, not ours. Tweet, I mean, you can tweet ours too, but tweet their stream <laughs> out. Get eyes on it. Have people donate to Halo 2. We can watch the run together. We fucking don't. There's going to be so many sword cancels. I can't fucking wait. But here's my PSA for Halo Infinite Flighting. If you don't sign up to be an insider, it's free, by the way, and it takes two seconds. If you don't do that and flighting comes out and you're like, oh, why the fuck, why is it I included that? If you didn't sign up, I want you to get up, okay? I want you to come back to this episode. Remember this moment. I want uh, you to get up from your seat or whatever the fuck you're doing. Go into the mirror. Like, go, go find a mirror in your house. And if you don't have a mirror in your house, well, I don't know what the fuck's wrong with you. But go find a mirror in your house, right? And look in that mirror. Look at yourself, right? And just think to yourself. You can even say it out loud. I don't care. But think to yourself, how fucking stupid am I? Right? Like, I was told week after week, day after day, by those wonderful, incredible, amazing HCS Pro Talk guys and 343 staff too, whatever, <laughs> that, <laughs> that I should be signing up for the insider program all the time. And it takes like two seconds to do. How fucking stupid am I that I didn't do that? Well, self, pretty fucking stupid, you know? Do you think the word's been out enough from Halo and 343 for that insider stuff? Uh, yeah. Considering <laughs> they say it in no. every single release, right, yeah. Right, but, but, but think about, like, I'm thinking about... They say it on Twitter. They say it in every single Waypoint post that has to do with Infinite. Like, right, they say it right, everywhere. But, I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking of, so we have a friend, Joe. We do have a friend, Joe. He doesn't pay attention to Twitter. He doesn't pay attention hardcore into. So they need to make a TikTok. <laughs> but like, usually like a beta for a game like this is like, it's not an insider thing that you had to sign up for. No, it's just open for everybody. Like, or if you purchased like Crackdown, you got access to Halo 3. Right. Beta, so it's, so. I don't know. Do they need Maddie was Maddie did say they even said it in their E three reveal they did and also yeah. Maddie adds something to my PSA so this is a myself and Maddie PSA for the Halo Infinite Flight he said and slam your head into that mirror these are fucking stupid Mia states to be honest I don't think the insider system is perfect if their goal is to get as much feedback as possible simply having an open beta with the next box and Steam download would do much better doesn't matter how much three four three talks about flighting the vast majority who aren't hardcore won't really bother to understand it yes i agree and yep. i also agree the flighting name is fucking stupid yeah i do understand the change though because what they wanted with mcc is your pc information they, you know they wanted to know you had to put your what dx diag whatever like yeah. command and get that information PC. yep put it into your insider profile yes now here's okay so here's my thing I think they should have marketed this as a beta program for infinite. I think that's what they should have marketed this. The original one, like th this will be an open beta for everybody because they realistically are not, I imagine they're not going to be able to change drastically a lot leading up to the release of the game. Okay. Although I could be completely wrong, but after the game releases, then it goes to the MCC flighting program where yeah. where those who are committed to the game already are able to sign up for subsequent flights if, if they continue to do this down the line for new features that are coming blah 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 and that way you can keep the flighting mentality but also for the broader range of an audience you could have like that beta mentality that everybody understands already yeah uh, mia says I always understood the flighting terminology to be some kind of year long, super early testing, but infinite sliding is basically just normal beta. Thank you. 
They will have minor changes to weapon balance and stress testing more or less. Unless 343 knows something we don't, why not do what Josh says and simply call it a beta early then switch to fleet? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And I know like, um, now it would be difficult on Xbox, but PC, other PC games like uh, Pub, PUBG and Rainbow Six Siege have their normal download and then they also have a test server download. And that test server is kind of like flighting. Yeah. Where you they put some early things in and players get to try them out before they're fully implemented in the game. Oh, so having okay. that whole flighting process, while I understand it, does gatekeep. Yes, just, it does. Just simply by the name flighting. That yeah. gate keeps just right then and there. Because like I said, and Maddie mentioned it. Uh, well, Ma- Maddie says right now, I think they avoid beta because it technically ends. So they probably want to avoid the beta being over and shipping game to then get people saying, this is what you gave us. I can understand that. Uh, Brian says, got to head out to bowling, have a good stream. Hey, thanks, Brian. You enjoy your bowling. Like I said, if you didn't already get that perfect 300 game. um, But no, like that. that's... When, when Maddie mentioned that they, they mentioned insider flighting in their E3 show, like if I was a, just a regular consumer or just video game enjoyer watching that, I wouldn't fucking know what flighting means. Yeah. Like that term is so weird in, in the overall context of a person playing a video game. Like you don't see the word flighting used in any other game. Name one. I haven't. Um... Mia says, Halo is being talked about uh, more, sort of, but Halo needs all the mindshare it can get. I feel like 343 is trying to be too cool or something with this flighting thing. I want nothing more than millions of people to play the infinite beta and get hyped for the full game. A- absolutely. Maddie says, uh, when if it's an ongoing flight, they can keep saying it's ever-changing and kind of saves face. No, like, it's, that's fine. But if I, w- like I said, though, from a marketing standpoint, like, they already said what they said. It's flighting. It is what it yeah. is. But if I were to redo it, I would say there will be an open multiplayer beta through flighting or through our Xbox Insider program. Yeah, sure. And But, like, it'll go to the, like, we have that, then you have launch, and then, like we did for MCC and how well this worked out, we'll have Insider Flighting that will continue well past the launch of the game. So you'll always have an inside look at the upcoming features and upcoming maps and blah, blah, blah. That's what I would have said. Okay. Fair enough. Um, Brooke says, when you Google the word flighting, the first result that comes up is a definition from Investopedia. See, so like nobody knows what the fuck that means. It's just not common. No, it's not. I mean, they're, they, they've, what's the, what's the phrase like? I don't even, I keep trying to think of phrases, but I keep fucking this up. Um, I'm sorry. What free? Like what I, type I, of? It's like the living in the something you dug or whatever. Living in the bed you made or whatever the fuck. I don't yeah, know. Like sleep they, in the, yeah, you, they, like you made your bed now sleep in it type thing. Yeah. They've chose that word. They chose that terminology. They chose that way that they're going to con- that they conduct things for this beta alpha program, whatever it is, they chose that and they have to stick with it. Now they can't change it. But if I were to change it, that's what I would have done. Yep. So Beth says agree. Sure. <clears throat> sure. Though. Wow. My voice is. It's okay. <clears throat> sure. Those of us who have been following Halo for a while, understand the flighting concept, but if the goal is to get new eyes on your game and get feedback from those new players, you need to simplify it and use terminology. The majority understands. There you go. Yes. Perfect. Mia says, to me, it's obvious that they don't have as many people flighting signed up as they want. They're they're constantly talking about it. And even high-level content creators keep pushing the flighting messaging to people. This could all be so much simpler. I agree. Uh, Beth says, heck, even calling the early flights that are more limited alphas uh, than when they widen it like they usually do with MCC flights, call that the beta. I can understand that. Maddie says, I think they have enough for the pre-launch infinite flight. They even said it's going to be limited. I think they want as large as a pool of players they can for future flights. Yeah, that makes sense. It just sucks from a standpoint of like getting back to the, what was it? The reach beta where I think that was open. I think you just had to pre-order the game to get a code. 
I'm I'm might be completely wrong on reach standpoint. Like I know for Halo Three, you had to buy Crackdown to get a code, and Crackdown was genuinely a good game, which was great. But like I think Reach, you just had to pre-order the game to get a beta code. And then what is it like it, for Call of Duty? Like you just pre-order the game to get multi- early access to the multiplayer beta, and then the multiplayer go to, beta goes open for everybody at some point. Yeah. So like, I, I'm just, yeah. A little weird and irritated that they just didn't do something like that for before the launch. Because realistically, this is a beta. Um, Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis had an amazing turnout for its global close alpha. And then when it went to the new, next stages, it went to public beta. And they fixed a lot of things. They got many people hyped for its release. I'm playing it right now, and it's super populated, and almost everyone participated in the beta. This is what I want for Infinite. Yes, I agree. That we we all agree the marketing could have been a little different and we want what's we, we want what we think is best for the game. We'll just have to wait for we'll have to wait wait and see. Uh Beth even says, Yep, every year I pre order COD to play the beta and decide from there whether I want to cancel it or not. Boom! And since the multiplayer is free to play, who fucking cares? MCC development and flighting updates by Poesums. <laughs> Yes, moving on. Yes, matchmaking rotation. Next week, we're going to be rotating playing the surround and prep for the Xbox Fan Fest tournament that you can learn about more in their thing. We already talked about it. It'll be ongoing from July 9th to the 31st. For players to get some practice in for it, we're rotating out Halo 3 team doubles to Halo 3 hardcore doubles. Make sure to sign up, get some practice in, and we'll see you out there, Spartans. Modding reminder. In case you missed it, with Season 7 dropping last week, we also had some new tools released for players to mod content for Halo CE. It's our first drop of new tools for a game in MCC. With it, we stood up a new modding sub forum on Steam where players can go and talk with other players that are trying to create new ways to play Halo. Make sure to check out the pinned threads here as they have a lot of information available around the tools and include a massive community resource that outlines a detailed breakdown of the tools and how to use them. Be sure to head over and check it out. And then custom game browser feedback. Now that the custom game browser is out in the wild and players are interacting with it, it's only in reach right now, we are looking to hear feedback. We have stood up a dedicated thread why postums hey uh if you're listening to this or if somebody <laughs> you, i'm gonna totally go gonna say this phrase? i'm so i'm gonna say this postums if you get clipped this or whatever or if you ever listen to this one i love you okay let me get that straight i really do i appreciate everything that you do and i love uh the pictures that you post on twitter i think the farm stuff is incredible i think your cutes your kids cute as fuck okay that out of the way. The second point I want to make is why couldn't you just say we set up a dedicated thread? Why is it stood up? I'm not going on a date. I didn't get stood up on my date. What the fuck does that mean? I mean, stood set. They like, they, they stood, so wait, you just like, said set. So they set it up. Right. It's, okay. it's just another word. Like, like, it's like, like, in beta. like just it's say, another word. Just say the camera stand falls over. You can say I stood it up because it was down. Maybe this. Okay, but what did this thread fall over? <laughs> you know, maybe it was just laying flat on its face for a while. I'm like, you know what? And they just stood it back up. We're going to stand this up. All right, sweet. And put it out there. Yeah. Postum's putting that shit on a pedestal. Love it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so we've set up a dedicated thread for everyone to let us know what you like, areas you want improved, and anything under the sun you feel needs to happen with the custom game browser. If you wanted to uh, talk us to us about it, please check out this dedicated thread at the link they provide. We look forward to hearing from you. Maybe I should just post an update in there. <laughs> just be like, hey, you asked me to provide <laughs> feedback. Here's my feedback on your blog post. You don't like the word or phrase stood up. Yeah. Because it's... <laughs> I mean, when you literally say it like that, it, it actually sounds like you're being stood up on a date or no, some shit. That's what just, it sounds like to me. Brooks, yeah. Brooks says, this one is definitely not that big of a deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Post some. That's why I gave you so much praise at the beginning because I genuinely do appreciate and love you. I just wanted to call that out. It's a say. Who the fuck uses fighting? Who the fuck uses stood up? All right. Fighting impacts more than the phrase stood up in a blog post, Josh. Well, right. that's it for the regular news. I totally missed the button and jammed my fingers into the mixer, but that... let's move on. To Con of the Games Watch. Yeah. <laughs> I got one piece of news. Oh, yeah. Baby J, former professional Halo player, has been signed 
by FaZe Clan. And FaZe Clan's tweet is. What? A phase? Yeah. Phase up? Phase up. <laughs> Stupid. I know. <laughs> We're going baby on baby. That sounds fucking terrible. That. Yup. Could have used better phrasing. We should comment on that one. Uh, like post them. I take away the stood up shit. We'll, we'll go. We'll go after FaZe Clan now. Introducing the newest member of our professional Valorant roster. Joining us for VCT Stage 3, Baby J. Fuck yeah. Beth, thank you. As a creative writing major, that wording doesn't make sense to me either. Let's fucking go. Okay, the wording might Boom. not make sense, but it's not this big of a deal. We need we- a bomb drop sound. Boom. Dave, the sword of Sangheos has arrived. He accidentally took a nap. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Davey Wavy to the live show. That's it for Con of the Games. Watch. Can't wait to hear the commentators get tongue tied saying Baby J or Baby Bay and Baby J back to back. Baby Bay, Baby J. That sounds great. I like that. Maybe they just say it's called one bay and one J. Oh my God. I like that. It's time for Will's Adventures with the Nailers. Hello, games too. Will, what did yeah. you play last week? Oh. And man. potentially today. Uh, Valorant. Still doing that. Are, how far are you in the Battle Pass? Um, this one recently came out, so. Yeah, yeah, recently came out. I think yeah. I'm in the teens somewhere. And they fixed they fixed the issue with, like, the weekly challenges not rewarding XP. That was, like, the day the day of or the day after the patch came oh, out. So, like, sure. I know that they fixed that, so. Okay. People, people should be safe to continue their weeklies. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of Valorant. Played with... Dave, Joe, over the week. Not me, because I am busy. Yeah, it's been it's been good times. Some bad times, but some good times. It's been. Um, Dave, Joe, and I also loaded up Escape from Tarkov yesterday. Escape from Tarkov. Yeah, they uh they did another wipe, so they you know fresh servers. They updated factory. There's now a scav boss on factory. Nice. Um, and just some More quality loot. of life changes. Like that? The uh, game is still not like 1.0 out yet, right? Or is it? I mean, it's still in beta. Okay, so it's not a but, 1.0 but release they're like, yet. Their thing is like 12.11 12, uh, right now. Oh. Which I don't know what that means. It, that might be their 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 beta steps, right? 12 sure. Point. Sure. Once it gets to like 55.2, yeah. then we'll, we'll get to a full release. Yeah. <laughs> Early access forever. But yeah, they're they're doing some good things. Um, and I figured if we wanted to get back in, yeah. Um, Dave we, killed Joe, huh? Yeah. Um, Was Joe being stupid? No. So Dave. We, we. I will explain. Um, we spawned in and we went to like straight to this building, right? Yeah. And there's two upper rooms with each having their own staircase in this building. Okay. Joe ent- Joe said, I'm going to streamer room because it's got a green screen and a video camera in it. That's what so it's 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 labeled streamer. That's funny. So like Joe, that. Joe's going to streamer. Um and Dave or Joe took off. And then Dave and I were behind him, and I go in the building. And I say, Okay, I'm going up to roller because a or mannequin, because it's a spot where a roller or Rolex can spawn and it's worth a lot of money. Okay. So each one of these staircases on opposite sides of the room. There is a light shining towards my staircase that I went up to, and there's not on one Joe's went up to. I don't know if what happened in the full situation, but I, so I, we both went up our separate sides. I'm looting around. Dave goes up and he goes, there's somebody here. Bam, bam. And Joe's like, that's me. Oh my God. <laughs> and for, I think what happened, we, what we kind of brought together here was that uh, Dave saw me and my shadow go up the stairs thinking it was me and Joe thinking that room should have been clear. And it was Joe was there. And I mean, it was a good two tap. So 
Good yeah. job, Dave. Yeah. Shots on point. <laughs> Maddie says, off topic, but have you guys ever seen the clip of Lupo and Tim killing Cloaksy in Tarkov? It's hilarious. Oh, God. I probably have, but I don't remember it. I've, Same. I watch a ton of Lupo Tarkov. I remember the... I mean, the clip that's in his intro video, too, where, like, the legs are break, Like, the legs... Oh, yeah. Because he jumps out and... Tim, yeah. are your legs broken? Yeah. It's funny, yeah, too. it's great. Um, so, yeah. Some good escape from Tarkov times. Awesome. Um, I. Okay, so I'm going to flip these around. So, Saturday? Saturday. Saturday night, played D&D. Yep. Uh, we fought a wraith in some raised uh, spirits. Did and you kill any ghosts? Well, yeah, they were, they're all undead creatures. But did you kill, like, the ghost from the bar or whatever? No, I, I, we're, we're nowhere near the tavern. So you're never going to kill that ghost? Not currently. It has not pissed me off. I don't need to kill it. Ghostbusters. That joke was actually made during the... Um, <clears throat> during the campaign because the, the wraith we were fighting uh, was able to bestow frighten on people. Okay. So when, it, when, when I, I broke it, I, I just yelled, I ain't afraid of no ghost. Perfect. When there's something strange. Yeah. In the fucking tavern. So who are you going to call? <laughs> Will's character. There, there you go. Um, but yeah, so we were fighting this wraith and I think the DM... The DM's been wanting to split up the party and kind of do some different things. And I was kind of ho- I was kind of thinking he was looking to maybe TPK us, total party kill. But um, I that have, would have been fucking scary. I have a basically a spell that I can use where I can hold someone in one place for one minute. And if you know anything about D and D, a round or a a um, a action is like six seconds or something like that. So holding someone for a minute is multiple rounds of combat. Okay. So we were able to clear out the whole place and kill the wraith. And then now we, uh, we ended up having to split our party because uh, something urgent came up and uh, four or five people are going one way. The others are staying, staying back. I wish you the best of luck. So yeah. And not dying. Yeah, it'll be fine. Um, but anyway, I was, so the reason I flipped these two around just from the, the document here. So that was Saturday night. Yes. I didn't get home till like 1231 stayed up till four and then got up at seven 30 for the F1 race. Yeah. So three and a half hours of sleep. Um, got up for the F1 race. I put my steering wheel on my desk, floated up F1 2020, did one like hot lap. I was like, that's enough. Took it all, <laughs> took it all down. I thought I was, you were gonna, like going to queue up the same race, like the, the Red Bull. Oh, I should do that, actually. Like, yeah. queue up the race yeah. while the actual race exactly. is going That's what on. I thought you were doing, yeah. No, um, I was like, yeah, I don't need to play right now. It's too early. <laughs> so, yeah. It was early. Um, They're always yeah, early, that, which is good. Is there anything else that I loaded up? I don't think so. I think that's about it. All right. What about yourself, Josh? I played one game over the course of the entire week in my non-existent free time. And uh, I replayed through the entirety of Halo 4 in MCC. And I put out a tweet that said, Halo 4 has a great story. That's the tweet. And, uh, it's genuinely really good. Yeah. Um, I played it for the first time with you, I believe. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I believe we ran through that together. When I, I took the time and I just paid attention to like, it, this is going to sound stupid, but you know, when you've played the halo campaigns for so many, like so many times over, mm-hmm. like typically I just play the missions to run through them, get the challenge completed. That's it. I don't really pay attention, but I just, like, I, I remember Halo 4 getting so much shit, me being one of them that gave it a lot of shit. And I'm like, you know what? I just want to see if my perspective's changed on this. And so I, I just queued up. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sit back and I'm going to take everything in. All the cutscenes, all the dialogue, all of the little lines of dialogue that happened in between battles that take place during the missions, like everything, I'm going to just take it all in. Um, And yeah, 
Mia says, Halo 4 gives me so many feels. I really wish 343 hadn't thrown away the didact and piece of external media. I haven't read that piece of external media yet. I think it was in a comic series, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yes, I, I know I need to. But yeah, I agree that didact dies like a little, well, quote unquote, dies like a little bitch in Halo 4. But that's besides the point. Um, but like, overall, Halo 4 has a phenomenal story. It's... It is so much more, like Mia says, emotional that I just didn't really, I guess you could say I didn't really care at first. And then now going back and, and fully replaying it, it's like, no, this all of this shit has so much of a deeper meaning in terms of the, like, Halo lore in general, right? And the best part is, is that Halo 5 is said to be a campaign where you'll have a much better understanding if you read external information. Halo 4 was thought to be a little bit like that too, but if you go and you play through it completely, you understand everything that takes place, especially during the librarian scene where you're talking to her. It's just, it's very, very powerful. It's very powerful. And then Mia says, seeing Cortana break down and how it affects the chief is so heartbreaking. His body language is so obvious. Uh, and you see how he's trying to process it as it's happening, despite being optimistic about finding Halsey. Yeah, absolutely. And then that final scene that takes place with Cortana literally saving his life after the explosion of the composer and, and the didact ship for that matter. But like seeing him be like, well, what the fuck? are we doing now? And then Cortana's like, fuck, you know, sorry, bro. I'm, I'm out. It, it's like, it's genuinely very, very good. It is very good. Um, also I love the design of the forerunner weapons because this is the first time you see them, right? This is the first halo game that has forerunner weapons. And, like the animations, when you first pick up a Forerunner weapon for the first time, the animation that it makes when it com when it constructs itself. Yeah, it was really cool. So fucking cool. And like all the little things like that are just awesome. And playing on a PC or a Series X and getting all the improvements and seeing the up upscaled visuals, Halo 4 really benefited from them. Halo 4, was a, Halo 4 was a decent looking game in general, but having those updated visuals playing at a full 60 FPS or higher. Like it just, it just feels so much more fluid. It looks so much better. It, it, the game's fantastic. The final scene with him in the window, the who's really human here about being a machine. Yeah. And the fact that Cortana says earlier on in the game, like make sure at the end of all this, you figure out who's actually the machine here. And it's like, you don't think much of it at that point, but you're like, no, I mean, yeah, obviously it's what that means. But later on in the game, you're like, oh, holy fuck. The game's phenomenal. It's it's genuinely really goddamn good. So I, I implore everybody to, if you had reservations about Halo 4 previously, go back and play it again. Maybe your thoughts will change. I had a great time. And you know what? I'm going to do the same thing with 5. And yes, I know we have Halo Halothon coming up eventually, but we need to know the release date of the game before I can plan that fully. But I'll, I'll play through Halo 5 again. Maddie, campaign. Play the campaign again. Now play the multiplayer too. Because <laughs> from a casual standpoint, that shit's awesome. Unless you get matched up with Absolute Sweats, in which case, ugh, have fun. Will, that's all I got. Let's get to some shoutouts. So we didn't do a community play date this week because, or I mean last week, because it was your wife's birthday as yes. a matter of fact. So happy birthday, Vicky. Um, happy belated birthday, I guess you should say. Um, but Davey Wavy and some other members of the community did do a community play date. So I want to give a shout out to everybody who did that. And Dave, thank you so much for, for facilitating that as well. I hope you guys had a really good time. Um, and we'll more than likely be back for Friday. So here's that. Shout out to Silos. Shout out to Silos. Is Dave going to... Dave, don't... Oh, fucking A. I'll let Dave do whatever he's going to do, but I'm going to keep going. Shout out to everyone who followed and subbed during the live show. Um, Havy or Havy, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not, I don't want to get this wrong. 
But if I'm not mistaken, give me one second. Founder and CEO of Vandal. Who is, I think, going to have a Halo team at some point. Hopefully. Also, one of their content creators is Trunks. Shout out to Jeff. Love you, Jeff. But yeah, thank you for the follow. Havy, Havy, I apologize for mispronounce it. Uh, R-S-N-K-X. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it again, but thank you for the follow. Mia, thank you for the two-month primer. Tools, thank you for the follow. And Ice Main Gaming, thank you for the follow as well. Greatly appreciated. Welcome. Welcome. Happy belated birthday to Lethal, A-L, not Tony. EU Lethal. Druck, JK7, Eco, and Shotzi. I didn't add that, but it was Shotzi's birthday yesterday, I think. Cyber birthday, gents. And then congratulations to Grim Brother One on seven years at 343. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Owen Wilson. Wow. Appreciate that. Today marks seven years at 343. Countless articles, dialogue lines, drafts, blogs, descriptions, names, streams, scripts, manuscripts, explanations, and elucidations. All alongside ridiculously talented and much beloved teammates. Let's keep it going, shall we? I think we shall. That's it for the shout outs. Community creations. Halo memes every day. Reddit.com forward slash r forward slash Halo memes. You know where to go. Clips of the week number 112. It released today. You should go check that out. Beth hits some pretty goddamn nice snipes, if I'm saying so myself, in some Halo 5. You should go watch that. Zerka, Halo 3 montage edited by Four Shot. Check out that video. And then the Hydro 2.0 Halo 5 Forge map by Infinite Forges. It's a pre-make of Recharge from Infinite. So go check those out. All the links will be included in the Google Doc of the show notes of the show. Will, that's all I got. We have to record the Inside HCS segment for June right after this episode. Therefore, would you mind doing me a solid and plug in the show? Of course, you can find us on your favorite podcast services. Just search for HGS Pro Talk. We're on iTunes, Podbean, Citrus, Spotify, and others as well. Podcast for Josh. You can join the Discord. Join the community discussion. Link is provided in the Google Doc of the show notes of the show and other places as well, like our Twitter. Um, speaking of Twitter, we're on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And also on Twitch here if you want to watch live. Uh, we have our own website, hgsprotalk.com. You can find a link to our merch in the top right corner. Ooh. Don't it forget, is there. Don't forget the wonderful people at Podcast Evolved. Make sure to check out HaloPodcast.com. Your home for Halo for any lore, missions, books, blocks, and top Halo news stories from their Podcast Evolved Mission Debrief Book Club filled with blocks and Halo headline shows. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Josh, what do we got next week? That's a great question. Fuck if I know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for episode 190. Of HCS Pro Talk. I want to thank you very much for listening. If you're listening to the audio version of this show, I screamed a lot. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, or not, you know. If you don't like it, then you, I don't know why you're listening to the show because I do it all the time. <laughs> but uh, if you're watching the VOD, hey, how's it going? That's for you. I love you audio listeners as well, but you know, you can see me do a kissing motion in, in the camera. If you're watching the VOD or if you're watching live, thank you for tuning into the live show. Hope you guys enjoyed. I even stood up once. Man, <laughs> this show got crazy. <laughs> Holy shit. Next thing you know, we're going to be fucking snorting lines of cocaine. No, <laughs> no, no, we will not be doing that. <laughs> never have, never will. Okay. Let, don't do drugs, kids. Stay in school. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> Can you send us out of here? People are going to watch this and think like, these are your eyes, Mug. Like, come on. And I'm not. That's the best part. Hi on life. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for episode 190. We'll be back next week for more fucking wild, whatever the hell this is. But until then, bye-bye. <laughs>